It has to do with the subject matter at hand and an event that occurred 112 years ago. Now we're going to go back into history a little bit and we're going to talk about what Neville recommends for us to do if there is something that is not feeling so great, if there's an undesirable experience that we have in our lives. In this week and next week's video, we're going to be looking at it from a perspective of life imitating art. Hi, my friend. Welcome to the Inner Work Mastery channel. My name is Fazila Bijo. Rewriting an event and rewriting the memory and experience and the feeling of an event doesn't just stop at our own personal stuff. We have the ability to impact and influence what goes on in humanity. We have the ability to influence collective consciousness. And I believe that with the story that we're about to go into in this week's video, this episode may be the strangest one yet for me, which is from chapter four of The Law and the Promise. There is no fiction. Now, this title cannot be truer. It will tell us how and what events have led up to an impact, which I feel that is still reverberating throughout humanity and our consciousness. And so this week, you and I have the possibility, the opportunity, the choice to make in terms of changing what we know to be of our history, of the collective history of humanity. When I was working on this video, I sat back with a bit of surprise, and looked at how did I come about to be aligned with what had taken place in history 112 years ago to the week. And so this week, we're going to be looking into how, how we can individually and collectively change some things that are still not feeling so great in terms of our memory of it. It may have taken place 112 years ago, but we have seen also in recent times that there are similar events that have taken place, which are just a little bit too uncanny and a little bit shocking as well. My name is Fazira Bijo. I live in Cape Town, South Africa, and I create these videos so that you can learn, explore, understand, and practice the great teachings for reality creation given to us and left behind for us by some of the great minds like Neville Goddard, Joseph Murphy, Florence Goebbels Shin, Wallace Wattles, and many more. This week, we look more into there is no fiction. And fiction means to be a lie, to be a story, to be something that contains a, a bit of a tall tale. Well, when I looked into this particular chapter this week, there were some things that didn't quite gel together and I get why some people don't understand Neville's work. But having read this chapter before, there were some parts that just didn't make sense. So I went into some research and investigation and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. The title of this week's video is Revise This Event in History. You are a creator and you can revise only the best imaginable. Neville speaks about this all the time. The drama of life originates in the imagination of man. It takes place within imagination, not with art. What is fable and what is truth? Now, a fable is a fictitious piece of work, and it could be a story or a legend about supernatural or mythical characters or events. We won't only be looking at this event in history, which took place 112 years ago. We're also going to be looking at what happened 14 years prior, something that I wasn't totally aware of. One of the big things to keep in mind as we go through this week is to understand where does the cause of events take place. Causation is mental, it is not physical. The physical 3D world is merely a reflection of what has taken place in the mental capacity of man. So everything was once in imagination. So there really is no fiction. Whether you believe it to be true or not, when something takes place, the fact that it originated in someone's imagination makes it to be true. 
because then there is no lie there is no story man believes that reality resides in solid objects which he sees outside of him which he sees around him and that this is the world that the drama of life originates in but it is not so because these events that spring suddenly into existence it is created by the moment by moment imaginal acts that man himself is seeing and playing out in his mental plane so our cause of our life the drama of life does not originate in in, in the external world of facts as i mentioned this particular chapter there is no fiction we are reminded that today's fiction what we think is not true becomes tomorrow's facts now it when you believe that this job is the only one for you that is a lie and that becomes your truth if you do not change it if you believe that you are alone that is fiction that's a lie and it becomes true because you believe it and so there is no fiction because if you believe something you make it to be true in this week and next week's video we're going to be looking at it from a perspective of life imitating art but we know that the law of assumption states that imagining creates reality your state of consciousness creates reality so what you hold in your state of consciousness what we believe to be true of ourselves what we are conscious of being is what becomes real in our lives whatever we assume to be true hardens into fact and becomes the external world that we live in to change anything that is undesirable we have the means of revision which is to rewrite whatever the experience is from the undesirable into the desirable and the way you hold that state and what and the way you become conscious of being the new state is that you live from the end of that state you live as though you are now already experiencing the state and it is already here in your reality you imprint the subconscious mind and you will then bring that state of being by focusing only on that end state as being your only true reality believe that you already live in the end of your desire you have the pen and you are the scribe so you determine how and what you want to see in your life so we're four chapters into the law and the promise each week i just follow based on what is it that is most um appealing to be discussed and It so happened this was the week in which I chose to actually do the case study on these events that Neville speaks about in chapter 4 there is no fiction of the law and the promise. These are events that I mentioned took place 112 years ago this very week. So I was quite surprised in terms of how the timing of this chapter aligned. I'm always intuitively guided and led in terms of the weeks video and the content that I am to create. So remember and realize we are responsible as creators of our life. Therefore imagine only the best imaginable. And today towards at the end of this video we're going to revise these events that have taken place in history. It's not just April 15, 1912 that we'll be talking about. Let's look further back to 1898. And if you don't already know this This was the week in which the Titanic took its maiden voyage. But instead of living up to the expectations, the Titanic met its fate when it ran into an iceberg. When you read chapter 4 of There is no fiction, you're going to get to a part where Neville talks about forward. You're going to come across the forward from Walter Lord's book A Night to Remember. which illustrates Neville's claim that imagining creates reality. It might be a little bit difficult to follow when you read the chapter. So I want you to follow along and understand how this fits together. It wasn't as obvious as when I did the research and then I pulled together the pieces that help make sense about the storyline in this chapter. This particular book was written in 1961. Walter Lord's book was right written in 1955. And I to remember is a historical non-fiction book that talks about the events leading up to and following the sinking of 
the Titanic on April 15, 1912. It remains the most complete and riveting account of the Titanic's fatal collision and also it details the behavior of the passengers and the crew. Some acts were noble, some ignominious. Some sacrificed their lives, while others fought like animals for their own survival. Walter Lord's purpose for writing this novel, A Night to Remember, was to allow people from all across the world to have a better understanding of what truly happened. What makes A Night to Remember so remarkable in terms of the level of detail and the research that, that Walter Lord put into it was that he compiled the survivors' memories into this narrative. It makes you feel like you are along with them on the ship, experiencing every moment of the tragedy right along with them. And I just want to pause on that for a moment because I mentioned earlier on that there are certain events that get repeated and they are, re and, and they are remembered throughout history. We have the opportunity to revise this and to raise the collective memory of this event. Walter Lord includes this forward in his book, A Night to Remember. In 1898, a struggling author named Morgan Robertson concocted a novel about a fabulous Atlantic liner, far larger than any that had ever been built. Robertson loaded his ship with rich and complacent people and then wrecked it one cold April night on an iceberg. This somehow showed the futility of everything. And in fact, the book was called Futility when it appeared that year, published by the firm of M.F. Mansfield. This is in fact a description of the fictional steamship Titan from the 1998 novella Futility. Walter Lord says, you may be forgiven for thinking you know the ship being described above. However, it is not the Titanic. Morgan Robertson's book was published in 1898. It was 14 years prior to the Titanic. Now, 14 years later, a British shipping company named the White Star Line built a steamer remarkably like the one in Robertson's novel. The new liner, was 882.5 feet. The Titan of Robertson's novel was 800 feet. The Titanic would have a display, water displacement of 66,000 tons. The Titan would have 70,000 tons displacement. Both would carry about 3,000 people and both, and both would have a limited number of lifeboats. Beyond the prophetic naming of the Titan, author Morgan Robertson also accurately described the largest vessel afloat, carrying the minimum number of lifeboats re required under the then regulations, and it was able to travel as swiftly as any ship in service. The White Star Line called its ship the Titanic, and Robertson called his ship the Titan. In both cases, these ships were labeled as unsinkable. With all of these similarities, Morgan Robertson's book actually reads like a prediction because in his book, the Titan has a fatal encounter with an iceberg and claims nearly all of the lives of the 3,000 on board. The Titanic left Southampton on her maiden voyage to New York on April 10th. It collides with the iceberg in the late hours towards midnight um, of April 14th and sinks within two hours on April 15th. The list of passengers collectively worth $250 million and unfortunately on her way over to New York struck an iceberg and went down on that cold April night of April 15th, 1912. And this is a story that has captivated people for 112 years. Everything in the world was first imagined. Everything that was first imagined was first consented and accepted and became an assumption. What we consent to is what we accept and what we accept becomes hardened into fact. Neville asks this question in this chapter. 
had Morgan Robertson known that imagining creates reality, that today's fiction is tomorrow's fact, would he have written the novel Futility? I would like to invite you to revise and raise this particular event. Given the events of last year with the submersible named Titan journey to go explore the wreckage of the Titanic, I would like to invite any and all of you to revise this particular event in history. Knowing with conviction and confidence that the Titanic, which was labeled unsinkable, did indeed make a successful crossing from Southampton to New York with all of its passengers reaching New York safe and sound. Remember, you are the creator of your reality. So imagine only the best imaginable. Please leave your comments, your thoughts. How did you find this week's content? What are your thoughts around historical events? You have the capacity and the ability to prune the vine, which means you can prune away all of that which is undesirable. I invite you to utilize your capacity as a creator to revise certain world events so that we no longer have to play it out in our collective consciousness. Imagine that you could change any undesirable events in history. You're changing how you experience it in your own imagination. You're changing your thoughts about it. And when we change our thoughts, we change our feelings and we change our memories about experiences and events, we are no longer going to repeat that in our future. And therefore humanity does not need to repeat this. My name is Fazila Bijo and it has been my pleasure to bring you this week's episode on There Is No Fiction, but particularly looking at this week's case study around a historical event that took place this week. 112 years ago. You have every means at your disposal to change history for you. So imagine better than the best.